All right, so get this. We got an article sent in called uh, A Designer's Vision for the Future of the Web mm -hmm. by Josh Naiman. Oh, yeah. CEO of Naiman Creative. Yeah, yeah. So we know you're interested in where the web is heading. Right. We're about to take a deep dive into Josh's predictions, what's coming soon, what's further out. Yeah. And what it all means for your digital life. So Josh starts by looking at what he calls the near future, the next five to 10 years. And uh, yeah. he thinks the web is about to get a whole lot more personal. Okay. He actually compares today's static websites to dinosaurs. Oh, wow. Impressive in their own right. Right. But ultimately unable to adapt. Mm. He's talking about websites that actually change based on your behavior, your preferences. Wow. Even the time of day. Hold on, seriously. Yeah. I mean, I could barely keep up with the changes on my phone as it is. Right. What would that even look like? Like in practice? Well, think about a shopping site you use all the time. Okay. Imagine if it felt like it was designed just for you. Mm -hmm. It remembers what you've looked at before, what you like, what you don't. Yeah. Maybe it even suggests things you might not have thought of but would actually love. Okay. Kind of like having a personal stylist, yeah. but for your whole digital experience. Now, that would be dangerous for my wallet, but I yeah. can see how it would be super convenient. Yeah. Is that even possible with current technology? Oh, it's already happening. Really? Naming Creative Josh's company is working on tools yeah. that use real-time data analysis and AI uh -huh. to make these kinds of personalized experiences possible. So AI is involved in this. That's actually kind of spooky. Well, AI can be used in many ways, and this is one where it could really help us okay. make things more intuitive and user-friendly. Right, yeah. Of course, responsible design is critical here. Yeah. It's not about manipulating people. It's about making the experience better. Okay, good point. So personalized websites in the next five to ten years. Uh-huh. Got it. What else is on the horizon? Josh also sees a shift from static pages to much more immersive visuals okay. using AR and 3D design. You mean instead of scrolling through an online catalog, yes. I could walk through a virtual showroom? Exactly. Like actually yeah. try on clothes virtually in my living room? Yes. Yes. Wow. Numb and Creative is already working with companies like Open Mind XR okay. and Elter in the AR VR space. I've heard of them. And that's just the beginning. Wow. This tech has the potential to change everything from yeah. e-commerce to education to entertainment. I could see that. But I have to admit, the idea of websites coming to life around me through projections and stuff, yeah, it's a little unnerving. Right. It makes you think about where the line is between helpful and, well, creepy. You're hitting on a key point. Yeah. This is powerful technology, and it's up to us to think carefully mm -hmm. about how we want to use it. Yeah. Do we really want constant digital stimulation, or are there ways to make it more balanced? Right. Enhance our lives without taking over? I think we have enough trouble disconnecting as it is. Moving on to something a little less intense. Sure. The article also talked about voice-driven navigation. Yes. Oh, okay. Josh believes clunky menus will soon be a thing of the past. Oh, good. We're already used to talking to Siri or Alexa. Imagine just telling your device what you want on a website and instantly getting there. Okay. Yeah. No more frustrating menus and getting lost in a maze of links. Right, exactly. I'm sold. Yeah. But designing for voice commands has to be totally different than designing for clicks. Right. It requires a major shift in thinking about user flow. Okay. Instead of clicking and scrolling, we'll be designing for conversations and yeah. natural language interactions. Okay. So how comfortable are you with using voice commands online? Mm -hmm. How would you want it to work on your favorite websites? It's something to consider as we move towards this voice-activated future. Right. Those are good questions. I yeah. guess I'm so used to doing things the way they are now. Oh. But all right, so far we've got personalized websites, AR, VR, and voice navigation. That's right. What else is Josh predicting for this near future of the web? Well, one of the more mind-bending predictions okay. is that websites will start to think for themselves. Wait, what? Like they'll become self-aware or something? Well, not quite self-aware, no. but Josh is talking about AI playing a bigger role in how websites function. Okay. Imagine a website that learns your habits, your preferences, even your moods, uh. and constantly adapts to give you the best possible experience. Okay. It's like having a personal web designer working 24-7. Oh, wow. 
just for you. Okay, that's either brilliant or terrifying or maybe both. It definitely raises some big questions. Yeah. Will AI help us be more creative or will it make us lazy? Mm. What happens to privacy when a website knows that much about us? Right. And who's ultimately in control? It's like we're giving the web a brain of its own, mm -hmm. which could be awesome but could also backfire spectacularly. It's a powerful tool. Right. And like any tool, it can be used for good or bad. Mm. We need to figure out how to use AI responsibly yeah. so that it enhances our lives, not creates new problems. It's a lot to think about. So AI is going to change how websites are designed yeah. and potentially how we interact with the entire web. That's what Josh thinks, and he believes this will be especially important okay. as we move towards a more decentralized Internet, which is another big prediction he makes. Decentralized Internet. Refresh my memory on what that means again. Right now, most of the web is controlled by a few big companies. Right. They store our data. They decide what we see. They set the rules. Yeah. A decentralized internet would be different. Okay. Imagine your data being stored on your own devices, giving you more control over your information. So it's like taking power away from the big tech companies and giving it back to the people. Sounds pretty radical. It's a big shift. And it would have huge implications for how websites are designed. Okay. And how we interact online. For one thing... It could mean the end of websites as we know them. Wait, what? No more websites? Yeah. What would we have instead? Instead of individual websites, yeah. we might see a more interconnected digital ecosystem okay. where information and services are distributed across a network of devices. What? So instead of going to Google to search for something, right. I might be searching through a network of personal devices. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'm following. Mm-hmm. How would that even work? It's a complex concept. Yeah. But the basic idea is to move away from centralized control. Right. And towards a more distributed peer-to-peer -peer system. Okay. So less like a giant shopping mall with individual stores yeah. and more like, what was the good analogy for this? Think of it like a vast library. Okay. Where information isn't stored in one central location. Yeah. But is distributed across a network of interconnected shelves and archives. Yeah. You can access the information you need from any point in the network uh -huh. without relying on a single gatekeeper. I think I'm starting to get it. But how would brands even exist in a world without websites? Mm -hmm. Like, how would they market themselves or sell their products? That's one of the big challenges that Josh highlights. Right. In a decentralized internet, brands would need to find new ways to stand out and <laughs> connect with users. Okay. They might need to become more like publishers, yeah. creating valuable content and experiences that people want to seek out and share. So content creation becomes even more important than it is now. Yes. I could see how that would be a game changer for businesses, marketers, and even influencers. Absolutely. Wow. And it would require a fundamental shift in thinking about branding and marketing. <laughs> Instead of interrupting people with ads, yeah. brands would need to earn their attention okay. by providing value, building trust, and becoming active participants in online communities. So it's less about shouting your message from the rooftops right? and more about having a meaningful conversation with your audience. Exactly. <laughs> and it's about creating experiences that are authentic, engaging, and genuinely valuable to users. Right. In a decentralized internet, the power shifts to the people. Okay. And brands would need to adapt accordingly. This is giving me a lot to think about. Mm -hmm. So the web might not even look like the web as we know it in 15, 20 years. Right. And AI could be both our best friend and worst enemy in navigating it all. That's a good way to sum it up. The future of the web is full of unknowns, but Josh believes it's going to be a wild ride. All right, yeah. hold on tight. We've covered a lot of ground here in the near future. Yes. But the article also dives into some even wilder predictions for the more distant future. Oh, yeah. You ready to get really futuristic? Let's do it. We're just getting started. Josh calls this next phase like 15, 20 years out, the distant future. Okay. And uh, he thinks the line between the physical and digital worlds is practically going to disappear. Okay. Now I really need to buckle up yeah. websites that aren't confined to screams. Mm-hmm. How is that even possible? Are we talking yeah. holograms, like in Star Wars? That's exactly what he's talking about. What? Holographic projections. Okay. Multi-sensory experiences. Wow. He uses this example of a restaurant website okay. that could project a 3D menu onto your table. Uh-huh. But it's not just visual. Right. 
Imagine interactive aromas mm -hmm. and textures that engage your senses right. before you even order your food. Okay, that's either incredibly cool or super creepy, depending on how it's done. Right. I mean, how much sensory overload can one person take? That's a great question. Would I even be able to taste my food after all that? It brings up this whole issue of like what we're comfortable with. Yeah. when it comes to technology. Right. It's something designers will have to consider carefully mm. how to create these immersive experiences yeah. without overwhelming the senses or yeah. crossing any boundaries. So this distant future of the web is sounding pretty intense. Yeah. Is there anything in Josh's predictions that isn't completely mind-blowing? Well, Josh sees this as kind of a continuation of what the web is already doing. Okay. Connecting us to information and experiences. Yeah. He just thinks it's going to become even more integrated into our lives, yeah. blurring the lines between online and offline right. in ways we can barely imagine today. Okay, I see what you mean. Yeah. But still, thinking about websites existing all around us, not just on screens, Right. it's a lot to process. Yeah, it is. Let's stick with this idea of a decentralized internet for a minute. Sure. That seems like it would have a huge impact on our lives, even bigger than holograms and virtual menus. Absolutely. Wow. A truly decentralized internet. Yeah would fundamentally change our relationship with technology and with each other. Okay. It would raise questions about privacy, security, control, okay. and even the nature of online communities. You're right. Yeah. We've all seen how social media can be used to spread misinformation yeah. and create divisions. Could a decentralized internet make those problems better or worse? It's a complex issue with no easy answers. Oh, yeah. On the one hand, decentralization could make it harder mm -hmm. for a single entity to control the flow of information. Right. But on the other hand, it could also make it more difficult to combat harmful content mm -hmm. and protect users from malicious actors. So it's like a double-edged sword. Exactly. More freedom and control for individuals, right. but also more potential for chaos and abuse. Exactly. Uh -huh. And that's why it's so important to have these conversations now. Okay. As these technologies are being developed, right. we need to think carefully about the potential consequences yeah. and work to create a decentralized internet uh, that benefits everyone, not just a select few. That makes sense. Yeah. So what can we do to ensure that the future of the web is shaped in a way that right. reflects our values and priorities? For one thing, we need to be informed. Cool. We need to understand how these technologies work, what their potential benefits and risks are, and yeah. how they could impact our lives. Mm -hmm. And we need to be engaged in the conversation, okay. sharing our thoughts and ideas, right. and holding those in power accountable. So it's not just about designers and developers. No. It's about all of us as users and citizens. Yes. Taking an active role in shaping the future of the web. Absolutely. Mm. The future of the web is not predetermined. It's right. something we're all creating together okay. through our choices, our actions, and our voices. That's a powerful thought. Yeah. So instead of just passively accepting whatever changes come our way, right. we can actually be proactive and help sh shape those changes in a positive direction. Exactly. Wow. And Josh's article is a great example of someone trying to spark that conversation. Okay. He's not just presenting his vision as the only way forward. Right. He's inviting us to join him in exploring the possibilities. Okay. To challenge his assumptions and to contribute our own ideas. I like that. It's like he's saying, hey, this is what I think might happen, but let's figure it out together. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. And I think that's the kind of mindset we all need to have mm -hmm. as we navigate this rapidly evolving digital landscape. Right. We can't predict the future, but we can prepare for it okay. by being informed, engaged, and willing to embrace change. Okay. So back to the distant future. Yeah. We talked about holograms. Yeah. And a decentralized internet. Mm-hmm. Anything else Josh is predicting that we should be aware of? Well, he believes AR and VR will become even more commonplace. Okay. He talks about these technologies becoming so advanced yeah. and integrated into our lives right. that we might not even think of them as separate from reality. So, like, instead of putting on a VR headset to enter a virtual world, right? those worlds could be all around us, Ex seamlessly yeah. blended with our physical environment. Mm -hmm. Like walking down the street and suddenly finding myself in the middle of a video game. That's the idea. And he also sees this happening with information. Mm -hmm. Imagine instead of searching for something on Google, mm -hmm. the information you need just appears in your field of vision, Boy. overlaid onto the real world. Wait, hold on. 
Yeah. How would the web even know what information I need before I even know I need it? Um, Is this where AI comes in again? Exactly. Okay. AI would play a key role in anticipating your needs, uh -huh. filtering information, right, and presenting it to you in a way that's relevant and useful. Okay, that's kind of cool, but also a little unsettling. Mm -hmm. It's like the web would be reading my mind. It's definitely a big leap, and yeah. it raises a lot of questions about privacy, control, right. and even the nature of reality itself. You're right. Yeah. If the web is constantly flying me information, even before I ask for it, mm -hmm. how would I know what's real and what's not? Yeah. How would I form my own opinions or make my own decisions? Those are important questions. And they go to the heart of what it means to be human. Mm. in a world that's increasingly mediated by technology. So it's not just about the technology itself. Yeah. It's about how we use it. Right. And what impact it has on our lives, our relationships, mm -hmm. yeah. and our understanding of the world. Exactly. Wow. And that's why it's so important to have these conversations, mm -hmm. to think critically about the potential consequences of these technologies. Right. And to work to ensure that they're used in a way that benefits humanity as a whole. So it sounds like the future of the web is going to be a wild ride. Yes. Full of both amazing possibilities and potential pitfalls. Mm -hmm. And it's up to all of us to navigate that ride responsibly. Right. And make sure we end up somewhere we actually want to be. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. And Josh's article isn't meant to be a roadmap. Yeah. It's meant to be a starting point. Right. He's encouraging us to have these conversations, right. to ask these questions, yeah. and to think deeply about what kind of digital future we want to create. Well, he's certainly given us a lot to think about. We've covered a lot of ground here. Yes, he have. From personalized websites and immersive experiences mm. to the challenges of a decentralized internet Yeah. and the potential impact of AI. And we've only just scratched the surface. Really? There's so much more to explore. Okay. So many more questions to ask. Yeah. And so many more possibilities to imagine. So where do we go from here? What's next in this journey through Josh's vision of the future web? Let's dive into what he has to say about the role of creativity in all this. Sure. He makes some really interesting points about how designers will need to adapt and evolve okay. as the web continues to transform. Okay, that sounds intriguing. Lead the way. Yeah. So we've talked about how the web itself might change, you know, right. personalized, immersive, decentralized, all that. Yeah. But what about the people who actually design these experiences? Mm -hmm. How does Josh see the role of creativity evolving in this future web? Josh thinks designers are going to need to level up big time. Okay. He's not talking about just making things look pretty anymore. Well, yeah, with AI potentially handling some of the visual stuff. Right. What will we left for human designers to do? It's going to be less about pixels and more about strategy, mm. about understanding human needs and motivations, oh. even ethics. Yeah. And then using all the available tools to craft amazing online experiences. So it's almost like designers will need to become part psychologist, yeah. part technologist, mm -hmm. part storyteller. Exactly. Wow. They'll need to be able to think systematically about how all the pieces fit together. Okay. The technology, the user experience, the content, and the overall impact on people and society. It sounds like a pretty demanding job. It is. Do you think design schools are even preparing people for this kind of future? That's a good question. Yeah. I think the best designers are always learning and adapting. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about what you learn in school, but also how you approach your work okay. and your willingness to embrace new ideas. Speaking of new ideas, Josh also talks about the importance of storytelling, even in a future dominated by AI and immersive technology. Yeah. Seems a little old school, doesn't it? He makes the point that no matter how fancy the technology gets, right. We're still humans yeah. who connect with stories. So even if I'm walking through a virtual showroom, yeah. I still want to feel like there's a narrative, right. a reason for being there, yeah. a story unfolding. Just think about the brands you love. Okay. They're not just selling products. They're yeah. selling stories. Mm. Stories about who they are, what they believe in, yeah. and how their products can make your life better. That makes sense. Yeah. So in a way, the more complex the web becomes, mm -hmm. the more important it is to have a clear, right. compelling story to guide the experience. It's about making sense of the chaos. Okay. Creating order out of complexity and giving people a reason to care. It sounds like Josh is calling for designers to step up 
and become more than just technicians. Uh -huh. They need to be visionaries, yeah, leaders, almost like the poets of the digital age. That's a beautiful way to put it. Mm. And I think that's what makes his vision for the future of the web so exciting. It's yeah. not just about the technology. Right. It's about what we do with it, the stories we tell, and the connections we create. So as we wrap up our deep dive into Josh's predictions, yeah, what's the one key takeaway you want to leave our listener with? The future of the web is not something that's happening to us. Yeah. It's something we're all creating together right, right now yeah. with every choice we make, every website we visit, yeah. every piece of content we share. So what are you saying we should all be emailing Josh <laughs> with our crazy ideas? Hey, why not? Really? He actually includes his email address in the article. I see. Josh at nameincreative.com. Okay. And encourages people to reach out. Who knows? You might just inspire the next big breakthrough in web design. On that note, we'll wrap up this deep dive. Okay. We hope you've enjoyed exploring the future of the web with us. Yes. And we encourage you to keep thinking, keep questioning, and keep creating. Absolutely. The future is yours to shape.